What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. After Sound here, bringing you Splinterlands content every single day. We also stream right here on this channel every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday morning. So come by and say hello. All right, guys. I wanted to do a hopefully quick kind of Splinterlands year in review. And you might be asking yourself, okay, why, why are you doing this in May of all times? And there's a very specific reason. It's because Almost a year ago, exactly to, or almost to the day, I should say, a year ago, at the end of May 2022, is when the Ranked Rewards update went live, and we got a ton of changes within the game over the next 12 months. Before that, and if you look at the beginning of 2022, for example, you know, there was still all that hype from Chaos Agent. The Chaos Agent general sale went live in, I believe it was like January 17th, so mid-January of 2022. And then we had the walkout promotion in February of 2022, and then nothing. It was crickets. It was quiet. The team was trying to figure out how to get, uh, you know, the, the ranked rewards update. We thought that was going to come sooner rather than later. It ended up being delayed all the way until the end of May. And during that time, the community did what it does best over those three months between February and May, and that is focus on bots. So we focused on bots and we <laughs> we focused on bots and we actually during that time got to understand the full extent of the bot farm problem, right? Now there's there's still more anti-competitive stuff like people using personal bots like myself, right? Uh, and I, I do think that that's an issue hopefully that we'll be able to address in the next 12 months. Uh, but Ultimately, and, and we will address it because of the whole modern format test that we're going to run. We'll see if that actually uh, actually plays out. But we we understood that, you know, or we, we got to understand. And I want to give a shout out to like Tales from the Cryptmancer, Gank, really putting in the data and trying to figure out, you know, the extent of the problem. And for us, we saw, you know, almost half a million players, daily active users or daily active accounts drop over the year over the 12 months from almost half a million to where we're at right now, which is anywhere between 60 to 80,000 players per day, sometimes even less than that. So I just want to look at five major updates that came in, or at least just comment on them. And I may be missing some big ones. To me, this is, this is just the ones that stuck out to me. It's almost like a five biggest takeaways, I know. But the ones that stuck out to me is kind of like the major tent poles for economic shifts within the game overall. Uh, and, and maybe not even economic shifts, but just major shifts for the project, we'll call it. The first of which we just talked about rank rewards, where the starter cards were essentially nerfed in the sense that you could not earn. So starter cards, which are infinitely inflationary because people could create as many accounts as they want, and they did in 2021, the second half of 2021, we saw all these accounts fly in, bots were just going wild and eating up DEC or earning DEC, and then probably dumping it on the market. So that's why we have the DEC overhang as it is now. So the Ranked Rewards update introduced not just the requirement for cards to be owned or rented, but we got a whole new uh, we got a whole new reward system with the daily focus. We had Splinter Spam. If you remember that one, that was a thing for a while, where you just you know you had one Splinter for the entire day, and you you know you didn't make any progress unless you played with that Splinter. Uh, so obviously that only stayed in for I think one or two seasons, maybe two months at the max, or I think was changed by July, actually. So, you know, ultimately, Rank Rewards was a really exciting time. I remember, and I talked I, I talk with Darkest Knight about this all the time, he and I were both just very, very, like, intensely playing the game, just all over it. I remember our ECRs were down in, like, the 10 to 30% range, and we were just having a ton of fun with the game at that time. We were just very intensely into the new Ranked Rewards update because a, a, another part of that was you could also earn as many chests as you wanted. I mean, I... Obviously, it was up to like, I think, 30 per day and then 150 per season, but it was completely different than the, the system we had been playing in before. So Ranked Rewards update came in about a year ago at this time, at the end of May. The second thing, and this was uh, further on in the fall, was the card level reward update. Now, this one, we, you know, it, it wasn't as big of a fanfare. And in fact, I'm sure a lot of people were a little bit more upset with it, but it did help to promote the leveling up of cards. Because if you're playing with lower level cards, and a lot of people were able to play at the higher levels, or more specifically, a lot of bot accounts were able to play at the higher levels due to ratings inflation and earn. You know, if it's a silver level deck, maybe even earn in diamond. So the fact that that this change was made helped the economics in terms of not allowing the ratings inflation and all of these mass accounts, which aren't people, right? Just just massive bot accounts or bot farms 
to rise the ranks through ratings inflation and dip into the higher rewards. So all of a sudden, that started get to, started to get removed. We started to see more of the accounts start to go down, right? So again, we went from 500,000 or half a million down to 60,000. So there, there was a, a slow, steady grind. Now, number three was uh, the Chaos Legion pack burn. And the reason I'm including this isn't necessarily because of the economic, but more so, I think, the philosophical side of things. I, throughout most of last year, you can find a bunch of videos of me saying, there's no way they're going to do a Chaos Legion pack burn. There's no way they're going to do it. There's no way they're going to do it. Obviously, I was proven wrong. They didn't just decide to do it. They did bring it to a proposal as, as governance for uh, Splinter Lens went live in the second half of last year. And obviously, the community voted very much in favor of burning Chaos Packs. So to me, that was a huge moment for the game. Obviously, we had probably some other kind of governance structures around at the time or governance proposals at the time. But that to me was a very, very clear signal to the community that, hey, you know, we, we messed up, you know, and I, we, we messed up. We, there's a lot of chaos packs. Let's go ahead and start burning them because you want to, or at least let's see if the, the community's appetite is to burn them. Keep in mind that this, at least at that point, was the primary source of revenue for the team, right? Pack sales and not, not uh, and risk watchers doesn't count because that all goes to the Dow, but pack sales, core pack sales were the primary source of revenue. And here was the team saying, well, we're listening to the community. Let's go ahead and put this up for a vote. If stakeholders decide that they want to start burning packs, we'll start burning packs. And then, of course, the team went through and tried to salvage as much of it as possible. I do not blame them at all for doing that. I know a lot of people look at that and say, well, they devalue the, uh, the, the value of cards or whatever the case is. And I can understand the argument. But at the end of the day, the team was trying to give value to the packs and uh, encourage people to buy them. And, and what's funny is that, like, I don't know the extent of land and how how much or how many cards land is going to eat up. I have my doubts that it's going to make as big of a dent as people are thinking. But even still with that, when you look at the amount of Chaos Legion packs, um, the the max cards that you could get for like legendaries or epics or whatever the case is, is relatively small to the active player base. Now, obviously, a majority of the active player base probably plays in gold or below, right? It's gold, silver, or bronze. But the point that I'm trying to make here is that at some point, whenever the next run happens or the next uh, leg up in the market, if we do get an influx of players, Chaos Legion packs or Chaos Legion cards, I should say, are going to be relatively scarce. I know it doesn't feel like it now. I know it doesn't feel like it now. But with land and with a potential new player base coming in, I just, I, I don't know, I still maintain that I think... I, I'm, I, I was in favor. I, I think I voted against the, the burning of Chaos Legion packs. I, after the fact, I agreed that it probably ended up being a good thing, but I do think that there will not be enough Chaos Legion cards, uh, or at least they're going to be scarcer than people realize when we do get an influx of players. And yes, I do think that will happen at some point, but we may have to wait until 2025. So let me move on from that. Number four happened this year. Soulbound reward cards that went live at the end of January 2023. Here was yet another nail in the coffin, or at least a disincentivized uh, way to, or a way to disincentivize bot farms. And we saw a bunch of bot farms start to uh, start to leave the game as well because the reward cards that they were winning were no longer going to have that immediate value for extraction. So that went live at the end of January, and then. In uh, at the end of March or early April, we got land phase 1.0. So land, you saw DEC almost reach peg, right? Obviously, we've we've come back down now, but there was definitely a massive, massive demand for it, a massive demand spike. Obviously, there's still an oversupply that we're still working through, and we don't really know how much is on the other chain. So I think that is that's going to be something that probably plagues us for a while. But as long as we have massive demand, and hopefully with 1.5. Uh, maybe tower defense, maybe other game modes in the future, we can start to eat through that massive oversupply, even uh, if we're bringing it back from other chains. So when I think through, you know, these five things, there, this is a lot. This is a lot. And as we look forward to the next 12 months, not the next year, but the next 12 months, uh, which will include this year and next year, we already know 1.5 is on the way. That will be another area in which we could eat up cards. We could eat up uh, DEC. We know that there's going to be some guild, uh, some guild updates in the in the near future. Hopefully by the end of summer, that could eat up a lot of the other assets. Right, lock up packs, lock up vouchers, lock up um, I don't know maybe other cards, Rooney. 
And we know that there's game modes that are being considered and potentially even in the works. So just those three things alone, I think, are going to be really helpful. And if they can get all of that by the end of the year, I think that could help to push the game forward. Again, not necessarily to the moon, but just to start eating through all the stuff that we have in preparation for whenever the bull run does come back. And yes, I I still very much maintain that we're going to need macro headwinds. Now, I don't like that I have to think that way. Uh, because I do believe that you know gaming can be recession-proof to a certain extent. But at the end of the day, we don't have the features to be able to compete with top-tier games in the Web2 space. So sure, is earning fun? Yes. Are token uh, and asset prices down now? Absolutely. So therefore, you're not going to draw in a lot of people. You see huge spikes in activity for a various amount of projects and games, right, specifically Web3 games, when the, the earnings are insane, right? I saw this happen with Splinterlands. I saw it happen with DeFi Kingdoms. I saw it happen with Stepin. We saw it happen with uh, recently with uh, Golem Overlord, right? So you just get people who rush into the game. And then, of course, they leave out as soon as the, uh, as soon as the earnings have come back to some kind of a reasonable level. So if we're looking at SPS now, as the primary reward token, is it at an earn? You know, is it as a re- at a respectable level? Is it as a, at a reasonable level? Probably not. I think we all want to see it a little bit higher. But in you know, ultimately, with the the actions that the team are taking, I'm hopeful that over the next twelve months, we will start to see a lot of that DEC burned, a lot of the SPS start to get staked. Actually, we didn't even I didn't even mention SPS staking that's coming in the next <laughs> in the next couple of months here as well. So there's there's four things already that we're looking forward to that could potentially be out by the end of the summer when you think about it, right? Those four things just in the end of the summer, that's 3 months, 4 months, right? You still you still have 2 thirds of the year, which could include Rebellion, which could include other things, uh Land Phase 2, which I think is probably going to get pushed to next year, but either way that could still be within the next 12 months. So you know, I, I'm excited. I, I think the last 12 months have been really interesting. Obviously, it's it's been a rough year. Uh, crypto and the general economy has been down. I don't like to blame that. I don't like seeing that used as the main excuse. There's definitely things within Splinterlands that could be fixed. And I know the team is working uh, diligently to try to uh, to work through all of those different areas. So as we move forward, if we are through the thickest or the, the worst part of the, the bear market, There's an argument to be made that we haven't yet seen that. But if we are, well, then I am really excited for what happens over the next six to 12 months. I mean, even in the next four months by the end of summer, as we start to work through and burn through a lot of the excess, uh, a lot of the excess assets that are existing in the ecosystem. So that's all I have for you guys here. Let me know if I missed anything or if you would include anything in this list that was major, major from the last 12 months, uh, or if there's something that you're looking forward to that I didn't mention over the next four, six, uh, 12 months in the upcoming, you know, upcoming year, end of 2023 and first half of 2024. But that is all I have for you guys. I will catch you all in the next video and see you around the game. Take care.